everyone. Today's discussion is about Chapter 1, Crafting Student Learning Outcomes. I am Angel Joyce G. Evangelista. Hi! I'm Erica May Morales. Good day everyone! I am Mary J. Timonuba. We are the Living Ceramic Group. Learning Outcomes. At the end of discussion, students are able to first define what is student learning outcomes, second, explain the use of Bloom's taxonomy in crafting a good learning outcomes, and lastly, identify the steps in crafting student learning outcomes. So first is the student learning outcomes. So when we say student learning outcomes, it is the skills, competencies, and values that the learner should be able to demonstrate at the end of the subject or program. So kung papansin ninyo, nakabase pa rin ito sa three learning domains, which are psychomotor or skills, cognitive or competencies, and affective or values. So ito yung mga dapat ma-acquire at ma-demonstrate at the end of the particular topic or subject. Dapat merong competencies or knowledge para ma-apply ito through skills and dapat uh, may insights and response to know if the learners truly understand the subject. So, there are two reasons why there is two student learning outcomes. So, first is to know if the teaching strategy of the facilitator is effective. So, malaman kung effective ba at madaling maintindihan ng learners yung strategy na ginamit ng teacher or ng facilitator. So, malaman ito depende sa um, performance ng learners. Second is to know how much learning have been achieved by the students. So, malaman din dito kung hanggang saan yung natutunan at naintindihan ng learners. So, pati na rin ang hindi na nila naintindihan. So, next is the structure of student learning outcome. So, a learning outcome contains one appropriate verb or an action and an object or usually a noun. So, the appropriate verb refers to the to action associated with the domain. So, yung appropriate verb that refers to actions associated with the domains which are cognitive, psychomotor, and affective. So, kung natatandaan ninyo yung tinuro ni ma'am last sem, um, yung Bloom's Taxonomy of Learning and example nito is yung cognitive. So, ang action verb ay dito is define, describe, and, and, and identify sa level ng remembering. So, next is the object describes the knowledge or abilities of the students that are expected to acquire and construct. So, last it often begins with student will be able to and or graduates will. Moving on, I am going to discuss the use of Bloom's taxonomy in crafting student learning outcomes. So there are different types of learning and one of it is Bloom's taxonomy. Benjamin Bloom and his colleagues identified three domains of educational activities. So these domains are organized into levels and is arranged in hierarchical order from simplest to most complex. As you can see, this illustration shows the cognitive domain which deals with the development of intellectual skills. So there are six major categories of cognitive domain starting from simple to more complex processes. Starting from remembering which is the lowest order thinking skills, here students will recall previously learned information. So there, there are different um, verbs that can be used which are defined, duplicate, list, memorize, repeat, state, and recognize. So the next level is understanding wherein here 
we construct new meaning by combining or mixing new ideas with the existing ideas. So, the verbs to be used are classify, describe, discuss, explain, identify, locate, recognize, report, select, and translate. So, the third level is applying the use of information in new situations. So, here students will apply what not up, uh, what knowledge they had acquired in to, in solving problems or in such situations so verbs to be used are execute implement solve demonstrate interpret and sketch so we are done now on our fourth level which is analyzing so we separate ideas into parts to understand the whole so verbs to be used are differentiate organize relate examine and assimilate so the fifth level is evaluating so we come up to a conclusion about something based on a criteria or standards so we use verbs such as appraise argue critic criticize defend and relate and the last level which is the most complex is creating so we build or create new ideas or work so verbs to be used such as design assemble construct develop and formulate take note that in order to develop clear learning objectives associated with a specific level of difficulty the use of verbs should be stated clearly so hindi tayo basta basta gagamit ng verb okay so we already had the background about Bloom's taxonomy since we encountered it from our previous lessons um, so Bloom's taxonomy orders the level of outcomes from the lowest order of cognition to the highest its goal is to provide a guide that can be used to create objectives and assessments as to what level of learning students should demonstrate. So higher order thinking skills should be developed with a solid foundation on the lower order thinking skills. So as learners move through each level, deeper comprehension of subjects is attained until learners reach the highest level which is creating. We now move on to crafting student learning outcomes. In crafting learning outcomes, it is important to remember the smart mnemonics. It means S for specific. We need to be specific of the knowledge, skills, and values that you want your learners to achieve. Remember to avoid broad topics as the expected learning outcomes. M for measurable. As teacher, we need to ensure that the set learning outcomes can be measured quantitatively using assessment tools or evaluation instrument. A for attainable. As teacher, we need to determine whether the learners are capable of doing the lesson and its activities. We should avoid complex activities for beginners. R for realistic. Teacher need to make sure that the learning outcomes can be done in real-life applications and reflect scenarios that the learner can relate. T for time bound. Always determine your time frame and how long the lesson will run because it ensures that the set objectives and outcomes can be achieved within allotted time. Smart methods help you push farther gives you a sense of direction and helps you organize and reach your outcomes. It also gives teachers like you a direction towards learning progression and comprehension of the students. Here are the steps in crafting student learning outcomes. Step 1. Choose a cognitive domain. This is the level of complexity and specificity at which teachers expect the student to perform. We, as teacher, need to think about what students should be able to know or do upon successful completion of the course or subject. The teacher should also focus on learning outcomes that precisely indicate what main skills, abilities, and knowledge will be acquired by students at the completion of the unit of learning. Step 2. Identify the specific level. It determines if the teachers have an appropriate variety of cognitive complexity or outcome categories and whether these align with instructional goals. 
in writing learning outcomes, it is important to keep in mind that we assess what is taught. Find learning outcomes that are source of objectives data for assessment, indicating clearly what learners have to understand, know, and or be able to do. All learning outcomes have to be observable and measurable. And also consider whether the learning outcomes encourage the use of diverse range of assessment methods and encourage both formative and summative assessments. After identifying the specific level to be used, you need to move on to step 3. Determine the action verb. Statements begin with the action verb that denotes the level of learning expected. Write learning outcomes in the future tense and choose a verb from a taxonomy able to describe most precisely the intended outcomes. It is recommended to use only one verb appropriate both to the level and the discipline to structure each outcome. Avoid verbs susceptible to different interpretation of action they require. This type of verb indicates in general behavior that cannot be objectively measured. It is terms such as know, understand, learn, and appreciate are generally not specific enough to be measurable. In remembering and understanding, we can use recall, identify, label, and illustrate. In applying and analyzing, we can use use, differentiate, organize, and integrate. In evaluating and creating, we can use monitor, test, judge, produce, and compose. You can see those verbs in Bloom's taxonomy. And lastly, step four, follow with the statement. The statement should describe the knowledge and abilities to be demonstrated. It starts with a clear statement. The writer can start with the sentence, quote unquote, students should be able to write clear, simple, and concise sentences that can be understood by students because this impact on the transparency and clarity of expectations. For examples, students should be able to identify the important feature of major periods in the history of Western culture. Students should be able to summarize the major events in the history of civilizations. Learning outcomes should be clearly accessible, written in terms that enable testing of whether or not the student achieved the specific outcome at the required standard. So to conclude the discussion, a learning outcome describes what a student must be able to do at the conclusion of a course. When writing learning outcomes, it is helpful to use verbs that are measure, measurable or that describe an observable action to avoid misinterpretation. The best outcomes will include a description of the conditions and the acceptable performance level. That's all for today. Thank you for listening.